Hi everyone, Michael Elliott. I'm the Campground CPA with Camp and Parker County. And today I wanna to walk you through how to track your EIDL and your PPP loan proceeds in QuickBooks. So the EIDL, if you're not familiar, is the emergency loan program that was obtained directly through the SBA. And the PPP is the Paycheck Protection Program loan that converts to a grant. So we need to track these very closely and specifically for a couple of different reasons. The first is that the emergency loan, the EIDL, the requirement on getting that loan was that you needed, you needed uh, a due to a loss of revenue, you needed loan proceeds in order, to, um, in, order, in order to meet your fixed operating expenditures. So that's why it's important to track for the EIDL purposes. And for purposes of the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, it's important to monitor and track those expenditures because after your covered period, um, some of those expenditures may be eligible uh, for some forgiveness. And so we're not gonna get into today what may or may not be uh, forgiven at the end of the eight week period of time, but in any event, it's important to track it. So I've shared with you a demo uh, QuickBooks uh, file. So this is QuickBooks desktop but you can do something similar if you're using QuickBooks Online or another accounting software, most of them will do similar things. So here's just a demo, a demo file. So I'm gonna walk you through how to think about setting up the tracking of these, uh, of these funds. So the, what we're gonna do holistically is we're gonna use subsidiary bank accounts underneath our main operating bank account. So uh, some of you may have been recommended by your CPA, your business advisor, even your banker to get a separate bank account for the, for the proceeds, which is fine. And if you do that, um, it's, a, it's a fairly simple process, meaning you're gonna set up just a fresh bank account and you're gonna use it as a totally separate bank account inside of your QuickBooks. But for the majority of you, you're not gonna have a separate bank account. I don't think a separate bank account is needed. And so we're gonna walk you through how you should track that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to open up your chart of accounts. I just used the hot button control A, uh, control A to open up your chart of accounts. Um, so you can see the kind of default chart of accounts. There's no activity in here at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new account and I'm right clicking here. Some of this may be different depending on your version of QuickBooks that you're using, what year you're using. You'll notice up here at the top, I'm using desktop 2020, which is kind of the freshest version, but all of them are going to operate very similarly. Um, all of the new versions, at least, are going to operate fairly similarly to this. So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new account, and I'm actually going to go ahead and set up the main operating bank account. So I'm just going to call this uh, operating bank account. Um, and again, you'll notice the account type is bank account, and you've got operating bank account. Uh, for the majority of you, you will have already had a bank account in your QuickBooks. So assuming you're not starting a fresh new QuickBooks file, which I'm not recommending, I'm recommending you do this in your existing QuickBooks file, so most of you will already have an existing bank account. If you use Chase Bank, it'll say Chase Bank or Huntington, whatever the case may be. So you're going to have a bank account in here so you can ignore this first step, uh, which is creating that bank account. I'm going to save and close it so you can see that we now have a bank account listed here in our chart of accounts. What you're going to do now is assuming uh, you've done this or if you had an account, this will be your first step. You've already had your bank account in here. You're going to go ahead and create another new account. Um, and this is also going to be a bank account. What I recommend doing is we're going to create two accounts. So the first is going to be if you've got this EIDL loan, the emergency loan, you're going to go ahead and put EIDL under the account name and you're going to create click sub account of. This is incredibly important. Sub account of and you're going to select what is the sub account of. And so you're going to select the main operating account that the funds actually went into. So if the EIDL proceeds went into your Chase Bank account, you're gonna select the Chase operating account. If it went into your PNC account, whatever, whatever account the funds actually went into is the account that this is going to be a sub account of. So the parent account is going to be the operating bank account. So you can now see we've got uh, account and EIDL as a sub account of operating bank account. We're gonna go ahead and hit save and new. And if you also were able to obtain the PPP loan, we're gonna create an account called PPP. We're gonna create a sub, uh, sub account of Again, the operating bank account. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit save and close. And what we're gonna see here is we are going to see that we've got the operating bank account here. And then we've got two sub accounts, EIDL 
and PPP. So this is how we want it set up from a chart of accounts perspective. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the process of some of those initial transactions so that you can kind of get an idea and a feel for how we should be handling this inside of QuickBooks now that we have the account set up. And so uh, what we're gonna do is let's walk through and let's say um, we received a, a few deposits, okay? So let's, let's receive a couple of deposits. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, we got our EIDL loan proceeds, right? So this is when they EIDL put the money into your bank account. And we're gonna say, okay, we got that on 4.15 of 20. Um, received from, we're gonna receive it from the SBA is who we received it from. Not overly important that you have it in here, but you can go ahead and click add as a vendor. Um, and from account, this is important. So for EIDL purposes, the EIDL inherently is a loan program. A portion of that may be an advanced grant, potentially, depending on how that ends up getting structured from SBA's perspective. But for now, I'm recommending you treat this as a loan. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna say from account. So where do we receive it from? Well, we received it from the EIDL loan account, right? EIDL loan account, because we, for EIDL purposes, emergency loan, we're intending to repay this. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, it's not set up in the account list. What do we need to do? We're gonna create it as a long, term liability, a long-term liability. Again, it's going to go through this process and says account type long-term liability, account name EIDL loan. So we're going to save and close that. Um, you can put something in the memo line saying EIDL loan proceeds and whoops, and the amount here. So the amount, let's just say you got $6,000. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit save and new. So what we're gonna do now is, um, we are now going to record the re receipt of the PPP loan proceeds. So remember, we're not selecting the main operating account when we receive these funds and receive the deposits, we're, we're recording them in the sub account. We're recording them in the sub account. Um, so PPP, we're gonna say we also got it on 415. We received it from, now technically you're gonna receive this from your local bank. So let's go ahead and put Chase Bank in here is fine. We're gonna do a quick ad as a vendor again. Um, from account, so for the PPP loan program, initially um, this is a loan program that will hopefully convert to a grant if you track the, the expenditures properly and you meet a variety of other uh, of, of criteria, this will turn into a grant. But for now, we need to treat it as a loan on the books. So we're gonna go PPP loan. So we're gonna create another account called PPP loan. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna say it's a long-term liability and we're gonna go ahead and hit continue again, account type long-term liability, account name PPP loan. And what you're gonna do in here is you're gonna say PPP loan proceeds, PPP loan proceeds. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna go in here, you're gonna put the amount, we're gonna say, hey, we received $25,000. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save and close, and we're gonna look at how that looks. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna run a balance sheet report. I'm gonna run it here as of today. So what you can see now is you can see in our operating account, we have EIDL and we have PPP loans. We also have liabilities for those as well. Let me show you one other thing in here. I'm going to go ahead and make a regular deposit uh, into, uh, let's say we received, these are customer, uh, customer funds, right? So somebody you know, stayed at your campground, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and receive this from a, whoops. Uh, sorry about that. I'm just going to add this as an other name. Um, let's say we received uh, some stays in a cabin or whatever the case may be, right? So we're going to go ahead and record those. Let's say we were depositing, uh, let's do $12,000 just so that you can see how this looks. And I'm depositing this directly into the operating bank account. This has nothing to do with the IDL or PPP, we're just operating bank account just for illustration purposes. So when we go back to our balance sheet, you're gonna notice the operating bank account has three items. It has EIDL money, it has PPP money, and it has the operating bank account's got the other money. If I collapse it, the total balance in the operating bank account's 43,000. That should match up to your checkbook register. Um, but for accounting purposes, it's all broken out separately. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how you will then record the use of those funds against the various accounts. So let's say we're going in here, we now want to spend some money on utilities, right? We wanna make a utility payment. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a vendor called utility company. 
We're gonna go ahead and do another quick ad as a vendor utility company. We're gonna pay this out, uh, let's say we paid it on the 20th and it's $2,000. The account is utilities. Now, we want this money to come out of one of the accounts that it's gonna be associated with it for, for loan purposes. And so in this case, I'm going to associate this with the EIDL loan proceeds, meaning I'm gonna use EIDL loan proceeds to pay for this expenditure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and in, under bank account, I'm not gonna select the main operating account, I'm gonna select the EIDL, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and new. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, now I want to uh, record a payroll run, which is gonna apply against the, for PPP loan purposes. So I'm gonna select PPP loan here. And again, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna say, okay, we paid an employee, um, quick add there and I'm going to say we paid an employee uh, $5,000 right our payroll was $5,000 this month so we're going to record a payroll expense of $5,000 and record it coming out of the PPP uh, bank account so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit save and close now what you can see here is I'll change the date because we made those transactions on the 20th so we're going to go ahead and 430 and now you can see that the accounts are updated meaning the EIDL went down by the $2,000 for the utility payment the PPP went down by the $5,000 for the payroll so what you're going to be able to do is as time goes on and you're using those loan proceeds for the appropriate reason you'll be able to record um, them coming out of these specific accounts. So it'll be two things will be happening. One, it will be coming out of the overall operating bank account, which is correct. We need it to, to come out of the bank account, but then it will also be coming out of the subsidiary bank account, which will allow you to then see the current balance of the loan proceeds to make sure that you are using those loan proceeds for the correct purposes and how much more money you need to spend between now and whatever period of time to use up those funds appropriately and to be able to track and monitor that. So that is how you're going to record uh, those, uh, those items there. Now, let's touch on two other things. So down here under the long-term liabilities, you see that we now have the EIDL loan and the PPP loan. Well, for the EIDL loan, let's assume it's not, there's no grant component to that as well, at all. So what's gonna end up happening is when you go to pay that off, when we go to pay off the EIDL loan in two years from now for $6,000, you're gonna do it like this. You're gonna go banking, write checks, right? We're gonna write that check out of the main operating account. We're gonna write it out of the main operating account. And we're gonna go ahead and do the 20 just, just for kicks here. We're gonna say, okay, we're gonna pay Chase Bank back. We're gonna pay off the EIDL loan account. And we're gonna make it for, uh, whoops, sorry, $6,000. And we're, you can put in the you know loan payoff. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save and close and you'll see what happened. The, that EIDL loan was paid off and it was paid off through the main operating account here. Now, for PPP loan purposes, the current hope and belief for many small businesses and campgrounds and RV parks is that that entire PPP loan program will convert to a grant, will convert to a grant. Um, there's some, they're currently today from an income tax perspective, we're not entirely sure whether part or all of that will be considered uh, fully, fully taxable. I'm not gonna get into that today, um, but it's likely to not be taxable and the expenses are likely to still be deductible. In any event, when we go ahead and convert this PPP loan program to a grant, what we're going to need to do is we're gonna to need to move it from the balance sheet. We're gonna to need to move it over um, to your P&L. And so you're gonna do that, you're gonna use an adjusting journal entry. Um, there's a couple other ways to do this. I'm gonna do it this way. We're gonna make a journal entry for the PPP loan. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna go in here. We're gonna say, okay, PPP loan program. We're gonna move the $25,000 and we're gonna say PPP loan was forgiven. And we're gonna go ahead and here, and the other account we're gonna put is we're gonna go PPP loan forgiveness. And we're gonna set that up. I'm gonna set that up as an other income item, other income. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue. We're gonna save and close. We're gonna save and close it. And you're gonna see what happened here. That liability is now gone because it's been converted. And we're gonna go ahead and look at a P&L report. And you're gonna see that here on your P&L report. Down here under other income is PPP loan forgiveness. That way we can properly track and monitor those expenditures. So that is a really super, super quick um, overview 
of how to properly manage and track both the EIDL loan proceeds and the PPP loan proceeds inside of QuickBooks Desktop. Again, I believe that you're gonna be able to replicate this across any number of accounting systems. If you are a campground or RV park who is a customer of ours at Camp and Park Accounting, and we do your back-end bookkeeping, we will be doing this process uh, internally in your bookkeeping systems on our end using QuickBooks Online. Um, if you do have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me, michael at campandparkaccounting.com, and I'm happy to walk you through this further. Um, if you have any questions, just please let me know. Otherwise, stay well.